Wow. This looks like a place where a serial killer would store dead bodies. So let's go in and see what do they do here. What's I up, wish Jim? It's good to see you. Thanks see you, for buddy. meeting with us. Absolutely. So you guys started as somebody who had a crush on bourbon and then you got married. That's right. Well, so you created a job where you have to drink bourbon on a daily basis for we work? We did. And we coordinate our outfits, obviously, too. I'm kind of new to it. I wouldn't call me a newbie. I mean, I look young, but I'm excited to learn. So we'll be able to teach you anything and everything you want to know. That's you said cool. you like bourbon. Yeah. You're going to love bourbon after you spend a day with us. I'm excited. Yeah. You know, I just hope that one day we can, you know, maybe a city like New Orleans would name a street after bourbon. So there's the ABCs of bourbon. A is America. America. Bourbon can be made anywhere in the U.S. B, it has to be uh, a new charred oak barrel. And C, it has to be 51% corn. As the predominant huh? grain in the mash bill. So these barrels are very important to bourbon. Some say 80% of the flavor comes from the actual barrel. Why are they so heavy? Well, they're made out of oak. Yeah. And they're charred. And then you fill them up with liquid. So each one of them holds about 53 gallons. So full, they're roughly about uh, 450 to 500 pounds a piece. So I could only carry like five of them. <laughs> yeah. So oh, these okay. barrels, they're actually, there'll be a flame that goes in the inside and it'll char the inside of the oak. Yeah. So it gets those caramel vanilla flavors from actually that char layer from the sugars in the oak. So it's all in the oak. There's no, like, you don't have to put a dash of honey in there or anything like that. Nope. No, it's just, whiskey and wood creating that magic. Each stave is gonna be comprised from different trees and different woods, and so that's why every barrel tastes completely different. Well, what is it about Kentucky where you guys are like born and you're like, all right, I'm either gonna do horses, <laughs> basketball, or, or bourbon? I'm too tall for horses. Yeah. Uh, too short for basketball. Too, too, so, I don't, I'm not good at basketball, so the only one left was bourbon. Maybe I'm just jealous being from Indiana. It's like we got like a car race and you guys get horses and bourbon. That seems unfair. Prohibition had a lot of reason why Kentucky remained the predominant producer in the U.S. Because, because you're all criminals. That's right. <laughs> Kentucky does have one of the best aging climates for whiskey because our temperatures in the summer can be anywhere from 85 to 98 degrees. Our winters, as you're here today, it's six yeah. degrees outside. We just had snow. And so that constant heating and cooling inside the barrel is moving that whiskey in and out of the wood. Were you guys good in science in school? I, really? I do have a degree in agronomy. Okay. So. I don't even know what that is. Well, <laughs> it's a fancy word for agriculture. Uh, <laughs> why do you just say agriculture? Why are you trying to make people feel bad? I, I've never heard that word before. You just made that up. I'm a professional commodity. <laughs> A lot of bourbon mash bills are going to be high in corn because that's to be 51% corn. Yeah. And then that middle ingredient, that 10% is rye. Rye right. is going to provide fruitiness, but it's also going to provide spiciness. Think about rye bread versus white or wheat bread. Wheat bread's real soft. Who is know. eating rye bread? Right. And then there's that marble rye. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah. That's well, just that seems wrong. I'm happy that rye gets their own bur their own whiskey, but like it's a little weird. The other grain that's always predominant, of course, is wheat. So wheat, wheat just provides a much more softer, muted, uh, delicate, more profile. And then the barley, it helps the other two convert the, the starches into sugar. I feel really sorry for barley. I can't warm. taste the yeah. barley at all. The, the barley is barley there. <laughs> Zing. Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> Typically what you want to do is you always start off worse just looking at the color of it. So that way you'll kind of look, it's kind of like a, a rust color. And the, but are, aren't they all rust colored? Well, I mean, I think yeah. when you see, when you get down yeah. like a 13 year old, you're gonna see a little bit of oh. difference in the color. And that color is just an indication of the time that it's spent in the barrel. We'll typically swirl it around a little bit. You'll start releasing some of those esters, start releasing some of those gases. Uh, and then when you nose it, you're gonna put your nose in there, but you're gonna try to drop your jaw just a little bit. Because when you breathe in, you have to come in through your nose, through your olfactory, and kind of dip down your throat. But you don't want to keep your mouth. You don't want to just shoot it down like you're in a college party. You just want it to let it hit the front of your tongue, maybe move it to the mid, and then I kind of like let it just sit there on the back and then finish it. Oh, so is there anything you notice in that one? It tastes like bourbon. That first taste 
versus the fifth taste. Correct. They're an unfair comparison, right? Yeah, you have to get acclimated. This particular distillery kind of has like this slight banana note, so you might notice like okay. a banana creep. A banana note? Now, ever since you said that, is it kind of like one of those videos, once you hear this word, you're, you're totally going to believe it. Yeah. Because <laughs> now I taste banana. Is this from the Dominican Republic? <laughs> so the banana, that sweet, would come from the corn or maybe the... Oh, uh, it actually right? comes from the yeast strain that is actually breaking down, you know, the starches and converting those sugars into alcohol. What makes someone an expert at tasting bourbon except for a, a history of alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are genetically gifted for it. Females typically be, have a better palates than males. All right, so all right. Stop kissing ass. There's, you know, true, all right, <laughs> uh, let's give them an award. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, no, but so like generally, females do have a better palate. They have more I sensitive mean, men palates. I disgusting. Yeah. I enjoy the taste of bourbon. What makes that different from somebody who likes scotch? Well, if you like scotch, you're typically gonna like earthy, dirty, smoky, peaty flavors. Yeah. Uh, bourbon's gonna lend more towards, uh, you know, you like that sweetness. You know, there's the flavor difference, but would you say that bourbon people are better looking than scotch people? <laughs> yeah. All right, well. Uh, Where do we nap? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, we got more drinking. We got, we got, we got more drinking. We're just getting warmed up. <laughs>